Hey, think about a passage of scripture, and it's that famous uh, Ten Commandments that was the movie. It's where Moses is going to Pharaoh and saying, let my people go. God has sent him uh, to confront Pharaoh and to let Israel go, right, and uh, to be free. And Moses doesn't really want the job, and he kind of is tentatively and goes to Pharaoh and is like, let my people go. And Pharaoh's like, I don't think so. And then a plague happens, and this thing kind of goes on and on. It's very long and bald, and it's two steps forward. And then Pharaoh starts saying, well, maybe, and then it's no, and then you can go, and then I'm going to kill you. And it's a very long and drawn-out process, right? So think about this. Now, anything God does, it, it's not random. Uh, it's not a mistake. It's not accidental. So what was going on there? And, and think about this in Scripture. This is always curious. In Scripture, it says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. What was he doing? Did you ever think about that? Again, not random. Well, part of what God was doing was he was destroying the gods of Egypt. And, uh, you know, the, the Egyptians had a god over the Nile. And what does God do? He turns that river to blood. You know, the Egyptians, one of their gods had a frog's head. And what's one of the plagues? It's covered with frogs. Their most powerful god is Ra. He's the sun god. And so what does it do? It plunges Egypt into darkness. Pharaoh is the son of God. And what, what is the last plague? It comes with death. And the young Pharaoh, the future Pharaoh, is struck down with death. He is ruling over all these gods. And he's clearly showing all the Egyptians that there's only one God. And, you know, you kind of ask, what again, what is he doing there? So, you know, the atheists will look at that and they'll kind of mock Christians and they'll say, your God is so petty, what's the deal? Well, here's the deal, this is what's going on. All these gods are false and all the false gods we see today, they're false, there's nothing there, okay? And there's no hope. So people that worship the false God are trapped, okay? And they're trapped for eternity. And God is in the business of healing, of bringing the dead to life, etc. That's who he is all the time. And so he's very intent on breaking the false gods. And this includes the false gods of our life. And we have plenty. And they go by the names, the usual ones of popularity, money, power, sex, you know, all the usual riches. But none of them satisfy. And again, God is in the process of even breaking down those gods in our life. And sometimes that process can take decades. It's usually not a fun process, but they're all exposed in the end because they can't bring you life. You know, God uh, will do this. And again, it can be a painful process, but in the end, you are in bondage. We are all in bondage because we worship these false gods and he wants to free us. He wants to free you uh, and get you to the promised land. And the reason, again, he does this is like God is all about life. He wants you to find true life, to find real life, and to get you out of the bondage of Egypt and into the promised land.